The transition is happening right now and there is absolutely no doubt when you look at the financial markets, you look at the regulatory changes and the structural um, transition of the electricity sector globally, the question is, is it going to be fast enough and will Australia actually bother to play a part in it or will we just be left with a whole lot of stranded assets? So I come at this not from an environmental angle, but from a financial and economic angle. I want my children to grow up in a country that is actually vibrant and has a healthy economy. And if we don't transition our economy now, we're going to be left behind. So a different angle. It is a story in my view or a perspective that gives hope and positive outcomes because there is a huge amount of evidence to say certain countries and certain sectors around the world are moving really, really rapidly. And the financial markets and the governments and our corporates have all totally underestimated the magnitude and rate of change. So that's a bit of context. You can look at it from a technology perspective. A transition of electricity markets is inevitable because of technology change. It's inevitable because of financial momentum. When the financial markets realise the technology change is happening, it's happening now and it's now totally cost effective, financial markets will move really, really rapidly. There are climate change reasons and there's pollution reasons. So the different drivers for each country and for each constituent. But uh, I might just do a quick deep dive on China. And China, the International Energy Agency, we might flick to first slide, second slide. Um, the chairman of the largest grid company in the world made this comment a couple of months ago. And to me, it's absolutely telling. So this is not, again, a left-leaning um, guy trying to hold back the future. This is the operator of the biggest energy company in the world, the biggest grid company in the world, and the company that has installed into the grid more wind and solar and hydro and nuclear in the last 12 months than any other country's ever done in world history. And he just says the only issue is mindset. The technology works. Now if China knows that and they're investing hundreds of billions of dollars every year and they're investing more and more with every month, then I don't think there's a lot of debate. So. The International Energy Agency made a comment in 2012, China is coal, coal is China. Now, to me, I use that because it's absolutely telling. The International Energy Agency's got all their forecasts wrong because they've missed the technology change that's happening in China. And in fact, China's not part of the IEA. They have no office. The IEA has no office in China and no perspective in China. And that's how they've managed to miss the fact that China is half the world's coal production, half the world's coal consumption, and coal consumption in China peaked in 2013. It declined by 3% in 2014. It declined by 4%. Coal consumption in China declined by 4% in 2015. And in the month of April 2016, coal consumption production, sorry, declined by 11%. So half the world's coal consumption, half the world's coal production, and they're in absolute structural decline. The rate of decline is accelerating with every month. Now we're two and a half, three years beyond the peak of coal. Our government, the IEA, hasn't actually acknowledged it, that we're actually even past the peak. And I look at the April numbers, down 11%. I mean, that decline is bigger than the entire Australian coal industry. And uh, our government doesn't even acknowledge there's a problem. So, to me, China provides absolutely compelling evidence that the change is happening. Now, it's happening because of a decoupling of energy consumption from economic growth. And it's happening because China is investing rapidly in every other type of energy generation that they can outside of coal. So... China put in 32,000 megawatts of wind in one year. They put in 18,000 megawatts of solar in one year, last year. Now, both of those numbers, or at least the solar number, will be beaten this year by China yet again. The final point I'd make about China is that Chinese coal imports are collapsing. 
China, two, three years ago, was the biggest importer of coal in the world. Chinese coal imports dropped 30% last year. Now, an economic perspective is pretty clear. If you are the world's biggest producer of coal and you've got 10% of your market supplied by imports and your demand drops by 10%, you cut your imports to zero and you protect your domestic industry. It's what Australia do, it's what America do, it's what China's doing. So imports will go to zero in China. Meanwhile, Australia is still planning for growth. Moving on to India, I probably should... Yeah, that's a good slide. Um, this a, I get, to me, in, China's actually uh, pretty well game over. Okay, they'll have to invest for another 10, 15 years to transform the biggest energy market in the world. But what gets me really excited is what is happening in India. In the last two years, the transformation and the uh, redirection of energy policy in India has been nothing short of staggering, and the world implications are phenomenal. So, don't expect you to read the, the numbers on the chart, but you just have to look at the little box at the bottom. Solar costs in India have dropped 25% year on year in the last 12 months. India, from a standing start, will install more solar in the next 12 months than any other country in the world other than maybe America and China from a standing start. That's how quickly you can move because when you build a solar plant, it takes you 12 months, or if it's rooftop a day. So when the price of solar has dropped 25% and is now 65 US dollars a megawatt hour, it's no surprise to me that the energy minister of China, of India, comes out last week and says that solar is now cheaper than new imported coal. Now, why is that relevant to Australia? Because India is the largest importer of coal in the world. They overtook China last year because China went into free fall. But our government and the coal industry in Australia said, don't worry about China, it was always India. So when the Indian Energy Minister two years ago says we're going to cease thermal coal imports within three years, the Australian industry rubbish can't happen. OK, well, imports of coal into India last month dropped by 15%. It's happening. The Energy Minister every month for the last two years has reiterated his number one objective is to cease thermal coal imports within two or three years. He tells the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi, he tells the Parliament, and he tells any investor who wants to listen to him. So again, two key messages out of India. Solar is cheaper than imported coal and will very soon be cheaper than domestic coal. And two, Indian imports of thermal coal are going to zero. Major structural decline. Um, Maybe just see what... America. America's a good um, data point. I won't go into detail about America. I'll just give you one data point to supplement this chart. So what this chart shows, over a, fifth, over a 10 year period, the US coal industry has been losing share quite consistently every year. Losing it to gas, losing it to renewables, losing it to energy efficiency. The US electricity market hasn't grown in the last eight years and coal's share has dropped from 51% to 34%. I can't wait to put that chart up in 12 months' time because US coal production and consumption in the first five months of 2016 is down 32.8%. So a third of the US coal mining industry, the third that's a third of what is left after a year of decade of decline has disappeared this year. The US is the second largest coal producer, second largest coal consumer in the world, and their market's being destroyed. I was reading a quote from the CEO of one of the few remaining coal companies left in America, um, Murray Energy, a quote from him last night, and his comment was, we think 2016's bad, 2017 is going to be even worse. Now he's the, one of the largest coal, surviving coal companies in America. But the IEA and our government and our coal industries, don't worry, okay, China's collapsing, India's transforming, there's always Southeast Asia. 
I was running a little bit late, there's interesting news coming out of Philippines this week. The second biggest utility in the Philippines had their AGM, their annual general meeting this week, and they said they will not invest a dollar in coal-fired power plants ever again. Uh, structural decline, I think, was Jeremy's comment. I think I might leave it there. It's, to me, pretty clear. The industry is in total structural decline. Uh, actually, can we go back to the first slide, second slide, that one? I'll finish on that note because I'm meant to be talking about financial um, aspects. To me, the financial markets are increasingly understanding that structural decline is inevitable, firstly in the coal export industry and then in the domestic market. So when you see companies' share prices, like the two largest listed coal companies in Australia, down 80 or 90 per cent in the last five years, that's telling you the markets are gradually getting used to the idea that this is terminal. Thank you.